What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're not going riding, surprisingly enough. Now today is actually a shop day and I'm going to guess that a lot of you, the reason you clicked on this video is because of the uh, thumbnail and because of the title. We are actually going to be tunnel cutting my 2004 Skidoo Summit 800. Um, obviously I know a lot of the stuff, it's not all 2004 Summit, I mean that's different bar rises are different the skis are backwards and all this stuff but anyway uh, we're gonna do a bunch of maintenance on this because i haven't actually touched it at all this year but then we're also going to be tunnel cutting it i'm thinking probably five or six inches off we might guess it's gonna depend on where that cooler is uh, i'm sure i'm gonna get some comments on here like why would you tunnel cut this thing uh the big issue that i keep running into is this and i have re-riveted and I've even tried like the nasty bolt method and everything and nothing keeps that from like getting loose every time because these things they're a lot of fun to get skis up I know a lot of people agree with me there half the posts I see on Facebook all the time are how to get these things to wheelie uh, but anyway uh, so every time the front goes up well, it forces this back to go down and then it catches this on the snow and then that in turn puts much force on that which makes that loose or sometimes you just get backwards enough where this actually drags on the ground and does a whole lot of damage so i'm gonna tunnel cut this move all this stuff forward still gonna have taillights still gonna have a bumper still gonna have all that i'm just gonna have a little more clearance plus it'll look sweet so yeah we're gonna do that a couple other things we gotta do uh we gotta pull this snow guard off right here because the other side broke off and i don't feel like fixing it um, I'm going to delete on these until I can find some other ones. If anyone knows of some good, decent hand guards, I mean, my hand warmer and thumb warmer work on this, but even the wind deflection is kind of nice. Other than these, because these broke when I hit a tree, uh, put that down in the comments. I'm kind of looking at the rocks ones, but we'll see. And then I got to fix the left handed finger throttle. And then a few other things here and there. Check out the clutches, do a compression test, a few other things. But at the start of the video, I'm gonna make sure I get the tunnel cut done so everybody who doesn't want to see all the maintenance stuff doesn't have to stick around until the end. So, let's get started. So I added this whole thing to help kind of hold some cargo. Uh, gas can. Uh, obviously it has the link system here for gas cans too. I don't have a link system. I also don't have the original seat so it doesn't really click in that well I would assume. This is more for just kind of holding just normal gas cans, stuff like that. But again with this whole tunnel being like this, you can't do that. Let's, uh, let's remove this stuff. Everything's so frozen, there's ice everywhere. And let's put this somewhere. This is the top of the spray paint bottle, that'll, that'll work fine. Curious as to what this bumper is held on by. I'm going to guess. I'm honestly not sure. If anybody knows what tail light this is off of, too, put that down in the comments. I got this on a part sled. I liked how it looked and the wiring clicked right up, so it found its way on this sled. Okay, oh yeah, that's right. The wiring's all jerry rigged in here. Gonna go over here for now. All right, y'all. So the next thing you're gonna want to do to get the snow flap off, there's four bolts in here. These two are full of ice, so might have to let those warm up a little bit just to get them out of there. But these ones aren't. I can show you on this one. Um, it is a 11. It's just really bent up in there. All right, I guess we'll show you on this one. Goes in there. I 
I'm going to guess there's a bolt in there on the back side or a nut. There totally is. Well, let's hope that's an 11. And it is. Cool. Let's see if I can do some balancing act here. It's amazing how well it works when you have the right tools. That came right out. But I'm going to put you back up on the tripod here. We'll keep going. So this bumper comes off with just uh, an 11, there's bolts on the inside, uh, they're just uh, drilled right into the bumper, and they're right into the bumper, so. Now that we have gotten the bumper and flap removed, now we need to figure out how much we're going to cut off of here. Um, I'm not going to cut into the cooler. Um, I know some people do that and they wind up welding the cooler. I'm not going to do that. Um, there's a reason Skidoo designed it with that big of a cooler and this thing already runs hot enough. And most of the riding that this sled does is in the Midwest on hard pack trails or in the few off trail places we get or on our few powder days that we rarely ever get, especially this year. It's been a pretty dead year so I still want to be able to run a flap um, at some like not necessarily this flap but I want to be able to run a shortened flap just to one make the DNR happy and two make the attempt to try to keep this thing cool still so I want to make something like this not quite this long because we really only need to get to the bolt holes here off of here now it will be it'll look like it's cut here but then it'll still have that extra support down here we're just gonna have to heat it up and bend it down. Um, not a big deal. I'm pretty sure if I can cut it somewhere here, flip this down, obviously we're gonna have to use my uh, not very good mathematician skills to try to figure out how, uh, how far to cut down. And my tape measure is also missing. Thanks, Autumn. No, I probably just put it somewhere, but uh, yeah. I'll blame it on her, because when she watches this video, she'll probably laugh. Anyway. Um, so I'm going to measure from here down and see how far we need to get to make that flap work. The holes that were used, you can see because there's a washer still in here. Obviously I wiped this thing down, but it's been there for, I mean, I don't know how long ago 2004 was, but it was a while. So I'm thinking if we stick right along at that two and a quarter inch range, that should be pretty good. So if we come up here, about where this is, and we put a mark at two and a quarter. Okay, I lied, two and a, yeah, two and a quarter. Two and a quarter from right where that bend starts, because we want to make sure we leave that bend so it can still stay kind of rigid. Two and a quarter. We'll do a few more here just to, just to be sure. Two and a quarter. So this for sure is gonna have to stay. We're gonna have to cut this down. And it's gonna have to bend over. And I'm wondering if we're gonna have to do the same kind of thing here. So let's eh, they're close enough. Not the most accurate thing in the world, but we'll square everything up actually before we wind up cutting. And for everybody asking what pen I'm using, it is a Milwaukee ink hole that I stole from Autumn. Don't tell her. So, pretty sure we're gonna have to do something like this. Um, I'm not sure what these holes, what these big ones are for. 
and ready to use them. Um, but I'm thinking if we cut it here and we notch out the side here and we can bend this down, we'll still be able to run a flap. It's going to put a lot of stress right here, but that's all right because I picked up a bunch of these things from Menards, 89 cent pieces. We're going to make sure we put those in there, help kind of make everything rigid because this is actually what creates a lot of the strength back here for lifting up in the rear. But obviously we still have to keep the, the, the stiffness so we can still lift it up. It's going to be a little more difficult with the track being in the way, but you still get stuck, you're still going to have to lift up the rear. So yeah. Let me do a little bit more math. I'm not going to make you guys sit here while I try to figure out the math of everything and I'll get back to you when I'm ready to do some cutting. And I'm sure there's going to be those people that are going to ask uh, what tools I use for this stuff. Um, you don't have to use all power tools. I just prefer it because I'm lazy. Um, I have a DeWalt quarter inch impact set of Hobo Freight uh, sockets and an Amazon adapter, stuff like that. And I lost my wrench. And then uh, again, Hobo Freight grinder. I think it's, oh, it's even the cheapest brand, it's Warrior. Um, and then I bought my death wheel from Menards because I'm not going to trust Harbor Freight death wheels. Um, just a four inch one is all I needed for this. It's it's made to cut steel, it'll definitely cut aluminum. Um, I've already taped my line. I'm going to plug it into the to this thing. And then, uh, yeah, we will we'll get cutting. And as with anything, with power tools, safety is always your number one priority. These offer no, no protection in terms of, uh, in terms of if that death wheel comes apart. But we got to make YouTube happy, and uh, and my mom happy. So yeah, we're uh, we're going with this. I guess the sunglasses probably would have provided more protection than this, but. Anyway, yeah, let's do it. And I do uh, apologize to any headphone users. This is going to be very loud. This is this is your one disclaimer that you're going to get. something cool guys um, when I pulled it all apart there is actually a little bit of weld down here and that welds actually broken and so is that one so if that kind of puts into perspective of how hard these things hit back here I mean those are pretty decent welds I mean those are better than any welds I'd be able to do um, and it actually broke both of them and you can actually see the evidence here on the back that you can actually see a nice little crease that runs here and it's cracked there cracked here and a nice little crease and some of this looks like it maybe took a, a rear hit. Um, I guess I've never been hit while riding this thing, but I guess, you know, it's a 20 year old sled. I'm sure someone has, but pretty good cut. Pretty happy with that. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit with just a grinder wheel. Um, you know, there's a little bit of, a little bit of residue left over. Um, that, that angle grinder is not what it used to be at all. Um, it might be time to actually upgrade. <laughs> all right, now my plan, uh, for bending this down and everything and to actually keep some of the rigidity there is I'm actually going to cut two and a half inches here make it even with this so then this can fold down and then this part here will actually fold over and then we'll rivet those together and clamp those together so it stays pretty strong but the flap will hide it and everything and if anything's hanging down I'll just yep her off there make her look all professional um, and then we will get to putting everything back together and obviously we're not going to have to check for leaks or anything because we didn't cut into the cooler so that's good um, but yeah i'm gonna measure this out with my super super accurate ruler i found on the ground and uh and mark that and then we'll go ahead and do that on this side and on that side and then i'll have to try to heat this up here see if it makes it a little bit easier to bend down I'm um, gonna do some clamps and a few other things we can try. Assuming it's aluminum, it's not gonna be too hard to 
to bend, but yeah. That means do not cut. That's what that means. Assuming this cut on the end here is flat, which, yeah, we'll, we'll get there eventually. that right there. I'm going to have to be really careful that I don't overcut that because I don't want to lose all the rigidity that this still has in it. Little Milwaukee pens, pretty nice. These Martin is ink alls. Autumn doesn't know it yet, but uh, that just became mine. Can't forget the safety glasses. This uh, safety setup also offers uh, sun protection. So if you're doing it outside, sun protection times. 50%, oh, no, I lied, 100% sun protection. That's perfect right here. This, this, OSHA would be happy with this. Probably not, but. Okay, and here comes the tricky part. Uh, we gotta make sure we do this without bending it here. And hopefully my cut was well lined up on both sides. I have a clamp on this side, and I don't know where my other clamp is. So we are gonna, you probably just use a vice grip and call it a day. Or locking pliers, or whatever the heck you all wanna call them. We should try to get as much grab as we can we also want to go slow with this too we don't want to split that aluminum um, see how this side's already kind of coming up a little bit I think I might lay down a little bit of liquid heat on here also known as a torch See if I can maybe heat this up a little bit, see if it'll kind of help with the bend. So I'm gonna go get my torch and I'll be back with you guys. All right, and obviously again, with a torch, safety is always your number one priority. Uh, the fire extinguisher is the snow outside and uh, our plan of attack, if it starts on fire, is to throw it as far as I can into the neighbor's yard. That is, that is the goal. Um, I also really don't wanna melt this. So we're gonna move this over a little bit. For the time being, um, we're also wearing an enclosed building with a bunch of other flammable materials. So, aside from throwing this into the neighbor's yard, if something's on in fu on fire in here, uh, well, let's just hope my cardio is good. But uh, yeah, again, warning to all headphone users: we don't need to melt the sled; we just need to heat it up.
we don't want to quite resemble the angle of this, but we want to get kind of close. So this side's pretty close, so I'm going to work on that side quite a bit. kind of mocking up what it might look like if I go with that angle obviously we can't run the long snow flat that's fine I'm thinking a short one about this tall just enough to make the DNR happy just enough to help cool it because the cooler is right here now um, I don't hate where that bumper goes by any means don't fall down on me um, this is obviously gonna need some attention the angle though for this part I mean that's pretty good I'm pretty happy with that I think we can go with that angle I don't need to do any persuading on that piece anymore. And then this right here will obviously, you know, not on top of a bunch of tools and stuff. Okay, come on. We'll sit about like that. So, it's not a huge tunnel cut by any means, but it definitely, definitely makes it feel a little bit shorter. So, yeah, I'm going to work on trying to kind of finish this up. And, uh, yeah, I'll try to kind of figure out what the next plan of attack is here. So because of how aluminum can crack and stuff when it's cold, um, as well as, you know, you can force aluminum back and forth until it kind of breaks off. I'm not going to try to force these down in here because as much as much of a little bit more rigidity as we're going to get out of it um i don't i don't think it's worth cracking it here and ha or having a crease or crack or anything that goes farther up here so we're going to yap these off here we're going to go straight here and then we're actually going to go down um and then we're going to let the bumper kind of take a lot of that but then i'll probably add i have some 90 degree angle pieces i really got to clean that thing up um that are going to go right under here that will help kind of solidify all this stuff and I can actually go right into the bottom of this and we can rivet those right in so this will probably honestly be stronger than how it was originally um, but for now we got to take this part off right here so I'm gonna mark that um, and then just eyeballing it I'm probably just gonna go straight down so let me grab my Good old OSHA approved safety glasses. I don't want to break that tail light. Piece of crap, just stay. Um, death wheel, and uh, yeah, we will get to cutting it. finished up and honestly I might wind up laying a bead of weld oh that's really warm uh can't imagine why laying a little bit of weld right here too um we'll see we'll see how how strong the back is
All right, so now um, everything's done. It's re riveted back on. Um, the bumper, the back of the sled must be wider than the middle of the tunnel because the bumper seems to be wanting to push out a little bit. I'm probably going to try to figure out like a next level bumper, try to find like a, off like a new RMK or something. Um, buy one of those, put those on here instead of that. It'll also give me a little bit higher grabbing place, which would be nice. But for now, it, it'll do its job. Um, the tunnel's re riveted back on. Uh, I'm going to put the tail light back on, I'll put all that in there, and then do the few other little maintenance things. And then I'll probably go take it for a rip. And, and then I had bought all these little brace pieces and stuff for underneath here, but I really don't think we're going to need it. It seems extremely strong the way it is. You know what, I don't think I even really need to zip tie this. Because I don't want to make the wires too tight. It's really not too bad. Um, I think I'm just going to let it sit underneath there. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to get hot enough under there for it to cause any damage by any means. Um, so, yeah, we're going to do that. Line up the holes. All right, and uh, that's how you tunnel cut a rev. First gen rev, dozen four. Let's do Summit 800. Um, cut about three, four inches off, I think. I'll actually do the full measurement. It's a little different because of how that, we had to bend that piece down. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna put this back on. I know Skidoo puts this in here, but I'm more of like here. So we'll see, might find a different one to put on there. Maybe a little newer style, um, but yeah it definitely gives it a different look for sure um i still kind of gotta clean up the edges in here i might just let them be though because it's not a huge deal it doesn't really affect the performance at all a few more maintenance things to do on this thing i don't know if i'll film it or not my gopro battery is getting a little low and i think this video is gonna be pretty long uh just because i did kind of a lot of how-to's on it and uh yeah i guess we'll we'll find out what what we can get into next all right guys there you have it um, that is the tunnel cut. We cut quite a bit off, so I took it around a little bit. It's kind of fun. Throws up a lot more snow, that's for sure. But hopefully, hopefully that back part will stay connected now and not be so not being ripped apart as much. I will try to figure out a snow flap. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, that's all I got for you in this video, guys. Uh, we'll catch you next time.